Kingstown is a section of Northern Virginia highlighted by residential, commercial, and recreational amenities that make it a go-to spot for families, singles, and seniors looking for a nice place to live. It wasn't always like that though. 50 years ago, it was a place known as The Pits. Owned by Lehigh Cement Company, it consisted of gravel pits, fishing holes, and motorcycle tracks. For a while there, the motocross scene of the 1970s ruled. As far as dirt biking goes, uh, or four-wheeling or anything, uh, you just had so much land that uh, was just unheard of around here. The best thing about the pits was all the different riding, and you could ride there at any time, rain or shine. There is always a place to ride. I meant all kinds of people. I meant professional racers. I just meant the local guy. And I meant all the friends I have now at the pits. It was just open space. It was like, you know, if, if everybody had a, a, it was like a park in your own backyard. Uh, it was something for everybody. So as long as, and there weren't a lot of problems, you didn't get in a lot of trouble back there. As long as you didn't mess with any of the equipment that they were still using, you were pretty much free for all space in the evenings and on weekends. See, the, the sand track was basically a very central meeting spot and kind of a racing spot for the guys uh, and gals that rode out here. Um, just had great whoops, uh, a full-fledged track, a good, good circuit, and then you had the hills that would lead you down to the lakes and back up to the track, which were a lot of fun, kind of turned it into a, kind of a hair scramble, kind of a racing atmosphere. And so you had the woods trails, you had the sand track, you had the King Hill, you had all these basic uh, like super cross kind of features out here that were just kind of natural or helped out by gravel pits dragging. This is a 1972 Yamaha LT2 100. This is the same machine that I learned to ride on when I was a kid and used to ride out in the hayfield pits. I call this one Aunt B because it never lets me down. This here is one of the original trails that we used to use to get back up in here. As you can see along the side of the baseball park, even with games going on, we'd sometimes just kind of creep along slowly and politely until we got up through here and then we would just gas it. <laughs> and uh, once again, just then we had 3,000 acres, let's say, of just all kinds of uncharted land that you may have to cross a hayfield road or well, gosh, Beulah Street here and there. They were, th those were actually named crossings. So, uh, but this is basically, was definitely one of my main entrances right here. And a lot of my friends that would come meet at my house and we'd ride over.
All right, well, this trail here, basically, once you're behind the, the baseball park, you can start getting on the gas a little bit, and, and you had the power line trails, which as you can see now are paved over. I'm glad that we could help with that, uh, which is kind of funny when you come out here and you see that. Um, but uh, here we have it. There was the main power plant. That was kind of a, a landmark or a, a spot where the power lines all came together, and then they split up right here, as you can see. This one heading more towards the, uh, the west side of the pits, and this one heading more towards the east side, down along the sand track and the, uh, the lakes, the hayfield area. Plenty of them. People were from the neighborhood. Had mo everybody had a motorcycle or a dune buggy, or a lot of people did. And then there were people that came from out of town to to use the space too. Uh, so it was it was a big draw for a lot of people. A band simply known as Savage is remembered for playing a few times at the gravel pits. The band, powered by a gas generator, saw partiers come out in droves. One concert of theirs in 1976 was even dubbed a local Woodstock and saw the attendance of not only a couple thousand people, but also the police. Rumor has it that the concert was so notorious that it was even mentioned in the local newspaper, The Washington Star. In addition to the motorcycles and rock bands, there was also plenty of fishing and skinny dipping going on. Hey. <laughs> It was the 1970s, and this was out in the country in those days. At that time, there was a rumor going around that a planned neighborhood similar to Reston was going in, but no one really believed it. So one of my favorite memories of going up to the gravel pits is really just, it's, it was a place to have fun, and we rode bikes, and we, we did the dirt bikes. We also partied there. There were bonfires. Uh, it was a whole lot of fun. Well, in about 1980, uh, I remember um, this guy from Hayfield, he brought his van up here. There was a road back there. All these trees weren't here. And he brought his van up here. And next thing you know, he got his van stuck in the mud right back here. This was a mud thing. And so he called up another guy in Hayfield that had a four-wheel drive. And the four-wheel drive came up here to pull him out. Well, next thing you know, both of them are stuck. So they knew some guy with a bulldozer and he came up here and p tried to pull the, the the truck out and the van the bulldozer got stuck so then they called for a a big bulldozer and the guy the guy running the big bulldozer was not happy so he pulled up here and finally the big bulldozer pulled out the bulldozer and he pulled out the other truck and then the van in the meantime the van got out by itself but somebody told me, the guy with the big bulldozer, they said, you better watch out because this guy carries a gun. So I just kind of, we were over here and I just kind of, we kind of faded off into the back. But it was a pretty interesting experience here at the pits. Yeah, and like, say, right around 1990, 1991, they started to build along all the edges of the pits, and you would start to get run out of there. All the good tracks were gone. All the entrances to get into them were blocked off. And uh, it, just, it was no fun anymore. There was nothing to do. So we started riding other places. That was kind of weird because you saw bits and pieces of it kind of disappearing 
we're getting bold, uh, bulldozed over. Um, and you sometimes had to avoid construction equipment. <laughs> I remember uh, us barely getting around some big dirt movers one day scared us. Uh, then there was actually some people actually moving in to some of the places, some of the townhouses along there. We'd still be out there riding and they didn't seem to mind at all. They'd often just kind of wave, uh, be having a deck party or whatever. Uh, but it got just smaller and smaller as far as the parts that were really fun. They kind of started smoothing everything out and that basically, you know, you had to find your spot still. And there still are some spots. I knew that Kingstown and all of that was sort of expanding, but I didn't really know what it meant literally until this summer. I mean, this is the first time I really went back and my sister and I went back to our old house off of Beulah Road and then we were driving around and I, I couldn't even figure out how do I get to the high school? So then I just went to Waze. <laughs> was like, you know, and it took me and, it, and we went down this big wide road, but it, none of it looked familiar. It, it was really, it was bizarre. Until we got to the school, I didn't even know. I couldn't figure out where were the pits relative to where I was and was I in the middle of the pits? <laughs> Am I in the middle of where the bonfire was? You know, that kind of thing. There were three major proposals. Uh, New Franconia, uh, which was 1,800 acres, and then a, a development called uh, Hosanna, which is out of the Bible, which is almost as big, and they were gonna have moving sidewalks. To take you to the shopping center and to connect the communities and all that kind of stuff. But both of them failed uh, obviously well, they were before their time and too expensive and land cost, land to develop that down there was a lot more expensive than people thought. Yeah. So when uh, Miller and Smith and the Halley companies came along they got together and combined resources and built them section by section. The North Village which is up this end was first and then the South Village which was the other side of Hayfield Road. Uh, would develop later, but uh, it's been very successful, very well planned, a lot of neat stuff in there, beautiful vistas on the open roads, and uh, but you look, you can see the power lines basically run through where the trails were, mm -hmm. so you can kind of visualize where some of that stuff happened. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Around 1985, plans were approved for Kingstown, a community with neighborhoods, shopping, new roads, and people. I've been living in Kingstown since I was a year old, and everything's really close and easy to get to. Um, everyone's really friendly, and it's just, it's beautiful here. Soon, the bulldozers took over. And now Kingstown is a great community with schools, pools, and hangouts. But there are some locals still around that remember the pits. <laughs> 